Hello guys, welcome back to Cinemation. This video will show you the movie Mine. Let's get started. Beware of spoilers. Our main character Mike is a US Marine sharpshooter. Mike is accompanied by his friend Tommy. Tommy and Mike are waiting in the desert for a target. They have a target in mind, a terrorist. It is their mission to kill him. After waiting for a while, a group of people arrives and it appears that a wedding ceremony will be held. Their target is also present to participate in the wedding. Mike sets his sights on his target, but the groom intervenes and blocks Mike from reaching the trigger. Mike doesn't know what to do. He is given the order to shoot the groom and the main target. Mike isn't sure if he really wants to kill someone on his wedding day. Tommy advises Mike not to think too much and to just fire the gun. One of the guards spots the reflection of Mike's sniper. He alerts everyone and tells them to shoot in Mike's direction. Tommy and Mike engage in combat against the guards as the targets escape. Guards are sure to outnumber Mike and his friend. They are forced to hide in order to keep their positions secure. The guards arrive quickly in their car and they hide behind a rock. They are just about to find Tommy and Mike. They are about to find Mike and Tommy, but a sandstorm comes and the guards quickly evacuate that area to save their lives. Tommy and Mike get caught in the sandstorm and lose their way. They contact their base to get instructions to move to the nearest village, which is five hours from where they are. They slowly, steadily and calmly move to the next village after the sandstorm has stopped. They are greeted by a sign a few seconds later. Mike warns them not to go ahead with their plans. He fears that the area in front of them could be filled by mines, making it unsafe to walk around. Tommy ignores Mike's warnings. He tells them that they must reach the village, or they will die from dehydration in desert. Mike isn't keen to go, but Tommy insists that they must. Tommy begins to walk ahead of Mike in order to show him the safety of the area, but Tommy is hit by a mine and loses both his legs. Mike moves one step ahead to save Tommy. Here's a click sound. Mike believes he has also stepped on a mine. Tommy will be the one to blame if Mike moves even a millimeter. This is a very nerve-wracking situation. Mike manages to remain calm and asks Tommy to use the radio to call their base camp to ask for help. Tommy is in great pain and can't do anything. He uses a painkiller to ease some of the pain in his legs. The radio is used to call their base, but it does not work. Mike sees his friend in this situation and says that he will leave the mine. He claims that the mines are too old and won't work properly. Tommy doesn't want Mike putting his life at risk. He pulls out his gun and points at his head. Tommy informs Mike that he must survive. Then he shoots him. Mike now finds himself in the desert alone, his feet dangling over a mine. He doesn't know where to turn. He tries to calm down first. He attaches his shoelace to an electric axe and pulls the bag with the radio to him. He retrieves the radio, but the battery is dead. Mike is smart and realizes that Tommy has a spare battery. He finally contacts his base by using the solar energy. He also informs them of Tommy's passing. He requests help to save Tommy. His superior tells him that the area he was in was susceptible to sandstorms, and therefore sending an aerial rescue team is impossible. Mike is informed that a rescue team will be sent on foot, but it will take them 52 hours to reach him. Mike must stay there for 52 hours to save his life. Mike is devastated by the loss of Tommy and desperately wants to escape this horrible situation. To get energy, he eats an energy bar and the wrapper is blown away by strong winds. Mike senses that there is a massive sense storm coming towards him. Mike quickly takes off his mask and uses his support and gun to keep from being swept away by the storm. Mike is smashed by the storm. Mike stands firm and doesn't move an inch, barely surviving the storm. The storm passes him. Mike looks up to see that Tommy's body had been blown towards him by the wind. He removes the radio battery from Tommy's bag. His luck gets worse when he realizes that the bag containing the radio had been thrown away. Mike is shocked and begins to laugh. He hasn't had any food in hours and has run out of water. After sitting in the heat for hours, Mike is in danger of becoming dehydrated. Mike has approximately 43 hours before help arrives. His patience is slowly eroding. He grabs his gun and fires at the sky. He shouts for help, hoping someone will hear him and save him but no one is listening. Mike realizes that he can't survive here. He points the gun at his head and ends his life. He sees someone walking by before he can pull the trigger. Mike tells Mike everything and asks for help. However, the person says that Mike should come forward. Mike attempts to explain that he could lose his life in an explosion if he took one more step. Mike is approached by the person who is walking in a non-straightening pattern. Mike gives him his water bottle and asks him to bring his radio. The man misunderstands Mike. He tells Mike that there is no music on the radio and that he shouldn't dance in this setting. The man then leaves Mike, without offering any assistance. Mike is frustrated but cannot help but to leave. After a while, he is still in the same position and sees a little girl approaching him. 
The child follows the same pattern as the previous person and walks in a straight line to Mike. Mike quickly drinks the water bottle she has given her. Mike is shown the toy soldier by the little girl who takes it out of her back. He also has a toy soldier that is identical to hers and he gives it to the little girl. He asks her to take the bag and radio to him. The little girl, just like her father doesn't help Mike and brings the radio to him. She then runs off. Mike is able to make a fire while the sun is setting. Mike begins to look at a photo of himself and his wife. His wife had recorded a video. His wife recorded the video, and he plays it. She tells Mike she wants him back as soon as possible. Mike begins to feel emotion as he watches this video message. He is afraid he may never see his wife again. Mike is exhausted from all that has happened to him. He falls asleep, and he discovers that the fire is out. Max begins to hear the desert animals cries at night. Mike was able to keep the animals away by lighting a fire. Without the fire, Mike would be in serious trouble with the wild animals in the desert. Mike shoots his gun in an attempt to scare the animal, but it doesn't run. Mike can't see the animal in the darkness at night. Tommy is killed by the animal, which he then gets very close to. Mike finally spots the animal using his torchlight. The animal is shot at by Mike who then lands it on one of the mines. It explodes instantly. The explosion was audible. Mike was surrounded by animals who ran away. Mike is visited again by the villager who visited him yesterday. The villager is smiling at Mike, who clearly seems annoyed at him at this stage. Mike is told by the villager that it was a miracle that he survived the night in the desert with wild animals all around. Mike is told by him again to get up. Mike refuses to listen. Mike tells him that he knows the location of the landmines because he walks in a specific pattern. The villager told Mike it was safer to walk in the pattern than to go straight ahead. Mike finally asks the villager for the radio. The villager finally agrees to bring the radio back to Mike, and Mike then continues his journey. Mike looks at his watch to see that there are still 24 hours before help arrives. He begins to hallucinate slowly. Mike watches Tommy rise from his death. Mike is encouraged by the imaginary Tommy and told that he would make it out alive. Mike begins to reflect on all the wrongs he made throughout his life. He regrets leaving his wife behind when he set out on his mission. Mike is now aware that the wild animals who attacked him last night are back. Mike shoots them, but the animals are more numerous than the bullets he has. Mike is attacked by the animals as they approach him. Mike struggles to stop them all. We see that Mike has killed all of the wild animals as the sun rises. He appears exhausted, and he looks at his watch to confirm that he has seven more hours before rescue arrives. It has been 45 hours. Mike was alone in the desert, his sole occupant being Mike. He walked over a mine with one foot. Mike hasn't moved in the past 45 hours. Mike receives a call by his senior, who informs him that the rescue crew that was sent to rescue him is 10 hours late. This means that Mike must survive in the desert for 17 more hours. He is asked by his senior if he can keep going for the remaining 17 hours. Mike is already tired and demoralized. He says he can't go on. His senior informs him that he can talk to someone. The voice of his wife then starts to speak to him. Even worse, he starts to hallucinate his wife while sitting on a couch. Mike begins to lose strength in his body. Mike starts to fall straight down, and it appears that he will soon lose his life. However, Mike was not able to get his feet off the mine. Just in time to save Mike's life and stop the mine from exploding, the villager arrives. Mike is then told by the villager that he once stepped in a mine, which took his leg. Mike tells him that losing his leg felt as if he had lost all of his life. As he told his story, Mike is being treated by the villager. Mike is told by the villager that even though he lost his leg, he found happiness in his life when he married and had a child. He tells Mike that no matter what happens in life, it is important to keep moving forward. Mike is then made to drink something that will help him feel better. Mike learns something from him. He says that the villager takes out the mines in the desert and then sells them to make a living. After removing the mines, he says he put in cans to make it seem like they are still underground. His daughter was working with him one day and she fell on a mine. She tragically lost her life. Mike was confused because he hadn't seen his daughter. Mike is confused when he sees his daughter once more after the villager has finished telling his tale. She quickly vanishes with the wind. Mike begins to hallucinate once more. Mike sees a wall emerging from the ground surrounding him. Mike sees a door in his face and opens it to find his abusive father, who beat his mother. He recalls the wonderful time he shared with his wife. He recalls seeing his mother in hospital, fighting for her life. Mike is suddenly shot. He realizes that Tommy and Tommy were being pursued by terrorists a few days ago. They begin shooting at Mike. He tries to defend himself, but he's weak. Then he remembers his wife, and he gets motivated to live. 
He shoots a ground, which triggers the mine. The sand shields him from the enemy. He quickly grabs his sniper rifle and begins to eliminate each enemy one by one. Mike survives the attacks of his enemies and notices that the rescue crew is there. The sand made it difficult for Mike to be found by the rescue team. He had to call their attention to let them know exactly where he was. Mike can see his flare signal just a few meters from him. He will be rescued if he can get the signal and relay it to his team. To get to the flare signal, he must step ahead. This will activate the mine and either kill or take his legs. The villager then tells him what he had said. We must never stop moving forward, no matter what happens in our lives. He believes it is better to lose his legs rather than to go to the desert and not see his wife. Mike is willing to put his legs on the line to save his wife. He gets up and walks forward, stepping off the mine floor. Surprisingly, the mine does not explode. Mike is shocked when he falls to the ground. He finds a can and goes to the mine to inspect it. He finds the toy soldier that he saw the villager's girl carrying in the can. Mike discovers that the villager had replaced the mine with cans. He was only stepping on a can. Mike bursts into tears. Perhaps he was mad at himself for not seeing the truth. Maybe he was happy to see the truth, but was determined to live. Mike knew one thing. His life would never be the same after this accident. He had learned a valuable life lesson. Mike uses the flare to save himself and the rescue team. Mike goes back to his home country, where his wife awaits him. Mike sees his wife and throws his bag down, then steps back towards his wife. He kneels before her as he did in different stages of his life. He isn't going to leave her this time. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more movie recaps.